Hello everyone, my name is Rajesh Kumar and I'm your DevOps SRE DevSecOps coach. I have a uh, close to 18 plus years of experience working uh, in uh, multiple MNSCs around the globe and uh, having in-depth knowledge of DevOps, SRE and DevSecOps. Uh, so I would like to introduce you uh, one certification program in a DevOps and that is we, we call it DevOps Certified Professional. Uh, now this is a two months of program, 25 tools uh, of DevOps you will learn. And uh, apart from that, you will also get the access to the LMS, lifetime access to the videos portal. It's a certification program and uh, you will have 25 assignments and two projects along with it. It's a completely weekend program. So here you have a classes on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, so as part of this course, you will learn multiple things. Here you see that uh, you will learn Linux, AWS, Docker, Jira, Confluence, Python, Git with GitHub, SonarCube, Maven, Gradle, Packer, Artifactory, Selenium, Jmeter, Ansible, Kubernetes, Helm, Terraform, Jenkins, Datadog, Splunk, and Neuralink. Uh, now, how do we, uh, you know, apply for this? So, how can you reach out to us? So, you have a WhatsApp number and email ID. So, please uh, reach out to us, and we'll help you to onboard this program. Uh, apart from this uh, DevOps certified professional programs, we are offering other certifications as well in a DevSecOps, SRE, and uh, one of the very very comprehensive programs which we have is in ma is in Master in DevOps Engineering. Yeah, so feel free to get in touch with us and then uh, end all for it. Thank you. Okay, so what I showed you through the YAML deployment, let me show you through the command. So how do you create a deployment? Then I don't know. So QCTL hyphen H here create. Correct. So I'll just use the create hyphen H. So hyphen H is a very magical command. Please use it. It'll be easy for you. So what and all you can create. So these are the resources you can create using create command. Out of which deployment is here. So yes. Here, create deployment hyphen H. And here you see you got this examples and all, and you can use this. So here I'm going to use this one to create a deployment. So now create deployment my dev image. I'll make it mine. It's a simple image. And how many how many replicas you want? three this is called replications okay so here you ctl get deploy nothing got it deployment ready up to date available you see here how many pods you got deploy three here and if you do the pods pods commands i have already shown you see that three pods last one is for the i did the last demo three pods you got deploy so you create it then you read it just again hold on yeah so you create it and then read it i'm going to edit it so edit what do you want to edit deploy my depth enter so many things are there slowly you will get focus on everything but replicas how many replicas i want somewhere here it is i don't know it's text is visible to all of you yeah i guess but the replica yeah. is in multiple place right you're not only in one place right? there's bottom also there's under the order. spec under the spec but that if you see under the status that is a runtime environment done see that magic just imagine it can be 3000 also if you have infrastructure in place okay but 
I don't want to don't want to edit actually. This is irritating for me. Do we have any commands which will directly replica set set the replica? Scale command. I don't know in the rest of the things. H. And now you can use like that. So yeah, Kubernetes allows you to uh, learn yourself only. Don't need to depend anyone. So here, how many replicas you want? I can go for 20 replicas because I have only one worker, right? And name of the deployment is my dev. So here is scaling up to 20. Look at the magic, the power of Kubernetes in the production. Uh, 20. Sorry, Rajesh. So more than 20 is not allowed with the same one worker? No, no, no. It's allowed. You okay. can create 2000 also. I have only one worker. No, I, it has it has 8 GV. If I create more than that, it will get stuck. 8 Bottom GV next. I have. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm, I can create a few more also, but I don't want to uh, despoil my demo considering more actually. Because okay. if the system gets stuck, I'll have to restart my machine. Okay. See here now you want one or two uh -huh. let's say two look at mm -hmm. the magic here you see two, two pod all other pod got terminated so this is the magic actually so just now i showed you only one of the features of oh, the deployment. yeah guys mute yourself if you're not speaking there's some noise coming from somewhere. mk so now we understood the replication one to many, many, many to one. All of you. Hello. Yeah, Rajesh, something need to be uh, not running on the pod, right? For the for the uh, many to, I mean, in case if you're downgrading. Um, so from one to 20 and 20 to two, suppose you're coming back. Something should not be running on that pod, right? No, it got terminated actually. You see that here? Yeah. This is a replication feature as many oh. pods you wanted within a second. Now I'll replicate to five. Okay. And you got the five. See that. So fast, right? I have only one worker. Remember that. Now look at the age guys here. Five seconds, four minutes, five seconds, five seconds, four minutes. Now I'm going to show you the second feature, which is called replica controller. So remember that Kubernetes will make sure your desire also. What was the desire? Five. Now I go intentionally and delete that some of this pod and see that what happens. So I'm deleting the second one, 4M. And here, this is the second pod. One more pod I deleted. Mind it, I deleted. Kubernetes has replaced it. You want to check this? See that. Look at this. Five seconds, five seconds, five seconds. So you're you set 100, it will be always 100. Who will take care of it? Kubernetes. So this feature we call a controller. Whatever you set, Kubernetes will make sure that that number of that any number of pods is always running in the cluster. Did you understand that? Won't it give the message saying that cannot be deleted rather than you go and check it whether deleted or not? Mm, go and check or deleted or not. That will be done automatically. I will not do anything. I'm not doing anything. Okay. Rajesh, we have oh, mentioned that. Okay, this deleted. Correct. Yeah, because it's saying uh, it's this deleted. I, right? huh, I created this incident manually because in a real time, what will happen? Some of the loads, let's say 50 nodes are there, two nodes suddenly got disappeared because of some reason hardware issue, software issue, network issue. So mm. that is a, I created incident of deletion. So you can see the automatically they created it. So it deletes, in real time, it, it gets deleted and gets recreated, right? That is the or one. Kubernetes has recreated it. Okay, okay, got it. So this so, is the one. That is uh, like you have not mentioning the like how much uh, how much pod we are running like five. I mentioned no here. Here I set replicas five. Right, I want five. Okay. Okay, so this is the second feature. Third feature means whatever changes you do, you will have a versioning. How do you do that? So there's one command which is called rollout. 
qctl roll out enter because i don't know here which command will tell me all the history of deployment history of what deploy what deploy my dep this command automatically will learn so right now how many histories only one there is no change in the deployment i did so there is no version in more than one so if i change this it will become a two version so here what i am doing right now changing the version and rolling out upgrade also i am doing it how so i am changing the image number image name v1 to v2 i created this image because of this reason only so i am just going to modify this edit options so kubectl edit what deploy which deploy my dev my dev i am going to edit an image i am going to change it from v1 to v2 this image is available on the hub.docker.com just for the demos like this save it now you see that i change this and see the history so here one it is two so earlier if you look at the pod it will show my welcome to dev school version one now if i see that kubectl get pods hyphen o wide and you see that all the pods got created here recreated again initial uh, last one v1 got deleted you want to validate call 32 see that welcome to version 2 upgrade has happened and you see that this is the v2 welcome to devops school v2 and this is the v1 now you want to roll back right so this i did roll out and it took few seconds you were 2000 pods also few seconds now i want to roll back down growth how do how do i do that so again roll out command will will be used i don't remember so roll out enter roll out undo undo hyphen h and now here there is a commands for this to roll back roll out undo what deployment which deployment my deployment and how much revision uh, which revision you want one back to one okay so here clear the screen enter rollback is done let me show you see here two three now i want to check that pod also whether rollback has happened or not here and open up any pod call and welcome to DevOps School V1. Rollback is done. So, guys, did you understand that feature of deployment? All of you. Hello? Rajesh, undo, undo. If, if, if we are on like uh, 10th version, then we can undo only, only to the 9th place or what? Up to the 10th version, you'll be having storage uh, default. So you can 9 to 10, 1 to 9, all this thing you can do that. But right now, what I was having one, first time one and two, and then second time I had a two and three. Why? So the reason is one is V1 image, two is V2. And V2, here we have a V2, and this is a V3. Three, uh, three, third one is a V1. So that is the reason you had a only the difference one. So unique one. That's the reason. If you could have uh, done the V3, then you might have a one, two, three. No, if if we are on a tenth version, then how to uh, like how to move to the uh, second version? So like this. Revision number one, two, three, four, yeah, five, six. Okay. So like this. So guys, this is the deployment. Now what is the next resources? So guys, what you did, you created a pod, namespace, deployment. And let me tell you, deployment is the most important resources. 80% of the time while deploying, 80% more than that, while deploying the pod, you use the deployment. Okay. So now next is service. What is service then? So service is equal to load balancer. 
Yes, I'm putting in a very simple way, not complicating what. Say service in Kubernetes, that means load balancer. Then you'll ask Rajesh, what type of load balancers? So there is a two type, network, application. So here, this one is network load balancer. So you'll say Rajesh, can I create app load balancer? Yes, ingress is needed. Okay, so this is another service. But right now I'm talk talking about this one, network load balancer. So this you need. Now the question you will ask why we need a load balancer. So simple, think simple. This is your cluster. This is your one worker, two worker. And here you are running one pod. Here you are running one pod, two pod, three pod, four pod. Now the problem for me, if I'm outside, understand that if I'm out, sorry, inside of the cluster, any of the node or outside, I cannot access this pod. I want to access all four pod. And for that, I need a load balancer. So I will hit this and this guy will decide either transfer the traffic to here or here or here or here. Are you understanding all of you? So this service is to load balance the pod over the pod network. I repeat, this service is equal to network load balance to balance the pod, load balance the pod within a cluster. Make sense? Uh, so Rajesh, load balancer generally we use it, right? To load balance from the traffic or user. So yeah. only single cluster or uh, traffic can be balanced between two different clusters as well, load balancer? No, here cluster hmm. represent the one and the load balancer okay. here we are creating for the pod, not for the node. Okay. Yeah, and okay, let's say request is coming from inside or outside via load balancer. So my request is coming to the specific uh, pod one. So re response also will be coming from pod one or it could be anywhere. So kind of uh, round robin or something like that. So right now outside, forget about it. Okay. If you are inside it, let's say one service to service, one application to another application. So let's say there's a red application and there's a green applications. One. This is the database and this is the applications. So here you need one more load balancer. So here this is the front end, this is the back end. So you will hit the front end. Front end will back end, back end to here and from here to all this thing. So like that. Mm -hmm. okay. So internal clusters, you, you are not running one service. You have, may have a 20, 30, 50, 100, 200, 500 services. Okay. So the question is, how do we load balance? How do we create a load balance uh, to the class, uh, to the pods? So answer is, so here remember that how many pods you have. So I have a one five pods for this and I want to load balance these five pods. Is a, these pods is part of the my deployment. So how do we create a service? So QCTL get SVC. This service I have not created because of this service only you are able to access the API server, okay? So it will be there by default, it's in default, okay? So how do I create a service? There are so many commands are there. One of the approach is your one, expose. Let's say I don't know the rest of the commands, so enter it. Expose hyphen H and so many tutorials you got it here. So let's create, let's copy service. Here, I'm creating, exposing the service. Expose means creating a service. Which one? Deployment. Which deploy? My deploy. My dev. So my dev has a five uh, parts. What is the service port number? 80. What is the container port number? 80. And Clear the screen. See that here. QCTL get SVC. This is the this is the service IP address. And if you hit this one, call HTTP. I'm hitting the load balancer. This is the cluster IP. Enter. 
one of the pod is serving i don't know which pod if you describe again cred remember that so qctl describe svc name of the svc here you have a five pod which is load balanced this is the ip address of cluster and port number each is balancing at the 80 port of the pod so it's, this is the way you can create a load balancer free of cost are you understanding all of you Does i don't understand what is the use of uh, load balancer in that see in this image in this image you have a four pod which one to connect let's say pod ip address is also keep changing right because pod will be created ip address will be changed so which one to connect so here you are creating one load balancer for pod so you hit here and this guy will decide it will transfer to here or here or here or here let's say this is not working so this automatically update and remove this ip address are you understanding so for load balancing the pod inside a cluster you need a load balancer in kubernetes we call it service understood hello okay. load balancer why we need it in aws you create a load balancer why because there are tens of ec2 instance you don't want to hit the ec2 instance you want to hit the one load balancer network or application and they will transfer the traffic to one of the working ec2 same concept here also we have here you are running the pod where you have a applications so you don't want to hit the pod is individual so you create a load balancer for it understanding yes sir so guys you can create as many load balancer you want it for the pod now the problem with this load balancer is the scope is only clustered that means this ip address which is of the load balancer service which will be accessible only within a cluster so what we do in this case so you can create a load balancer multiple types multiple level what is this so one of the type of the load balancer is cluster ip the one which i created just now that's a default one but if you want the load balancers to be exposed at exposed at every node then you have to use node port okay so let me create it so i'm creating one more, more load balancer and here hyphen hyphen name node port np i'm just giving the name hyphen hyphen name np and then type here type is equal to node port so what will happen look at this here i created one new load balancer different load balancer which will balance the five pod again because here but this time what has happened this service get exposed i repeat please hear me out this service this ip address get exposed at every node at this port number this is the node port number means ip address of node and this port number can we access it let me check it out so here 31308 see here that means now i can access the same service okay same service at the ip address of node and port number this is called node port number now you can also you can also create one more load balancer outside this will be managed by aws or cool cloud and this will load balance the node actually at the same port number so you can access this one so i'll not get into that right now because we cannot create but this is the node port this is the cluster ip okay so in a nutshell if you want to load balance the can you describe it again what is the difference between cluster ip and node port so cluster ip type if it is a cluster ip remember 
there'll be one load balancer created here but this will be accessible only inside a cluster okay now node port will do one thing extra it will create one cluster ip service and same time it will expose that service at certain port or of every node so look at this image here if you are inside it cluster you can access it but if you are outside it because of the cluster ip range you cannot access it but you can access the ip address of the node so that is a node port getting so in a simple way if i say if you want to access the service mind it if you want to access the service at the ip address of worker node i repeat if you want to access the service at the ip address of worker node then you should use type node port simple okay if you want to access the service within a cluster then you should use the default one which is cluster ip simple depends on where you want to access it okay so service is the load balancer free of cost which is available so now here we discuss service which will help you to load balance the pods now next one which i am going that to is, tell you what about what about the like uh, it is like app app service what is that uh, like the load balancer app ingress ingress you have to create ingress ingress app load balancer is equal to in kubernet ingress okay now after see if you remember that in kubernet and in aws first i taught you ec2 then i taught you auto scaling group then i taught you ebs storage remember that correct now so here in kubernet i yes. taught you pod here i taught you deployment and then load balancer here network load balancer service and then here i am talking you storage here pv and pvc pv and pvc you able to correlate all this stuff aws versus kubernet hello hello yes rajesh one yeah. one query on load balancer suppose if you want to remove one ip um, so for example you have file load balancer right is it possible to edit no no this is a discovery actually so what you can do you can reduce the your uh, what do you say deployment number of replicas others you want to have a two deployment keep it separate so okay. here i i created all the pods belong to my dep should be load balanced by this this service so keep it separate got it yeah rajesh okay so individual uh, the the management of load balancer won't be happening right it creates uh, with one command and you know deletes with one That's yeah it. yeah individual this is called not a cat's business it's a cattle business remember cattle means yeah we have the node manager where you can go and you know remove uh, one of the node from the load balancer just to make sure that you know some faulty things are not hitting that one or any performance issue so those type of management won't be possible here right just no thank no no oh. Oh. but what we do we don't hit we don't allow in the production we don't allow to hit on the node manager we external load balancer we create and here we add a dns so right now because you are just starting this domain 
I'm not complicating this, but uh, again, if you look at the LMS, you have 20 to 30 hours of videos and each and every topics has been discussed in detail actually. Yeah, in that case, like what are the users who are already in those load balances? How come they will be shifting to this, the one which you are creating new? Or you will have the backup huh. of the new one already? No, no, no. Both is needed actually. Let me show you the visualizations. Let's say both are needed. This is your cluster. This is worker one, this is worker two. And here, think simple, okay? This is your pod one and two, three and four. So you created one service. This service, I'm not creating multiple service. I'm creating simple one, one service. This service okay. is accessible inside a cluster. But what about outside? So I will do node port. This service, I'll expose the node port. Okay. So this service, uh, this uh, worker IP address, I'll use it for creating a cloud load balancer. So this load balancer will be managed by AWS. This service, which is a late load balancer again, managed by Kubernetes. And here both are merging. Okay. So now we got the load balancer. This is, uh, and now this load balancer will connect to DNS. And then DNS means www.devopschool.com. So you hit this one. Traffic will transfer to here. From here, one of the node, let me change the color one of the node and from the node it will come to this service and service will decide it should go to here or there getting more points yeah understood yeah got it yeah so now next one is pv and pvc i'll put it uh, in a very simple way uh, rajesh sorry for interruption so the dns services is global it is also provided by cloud or so we have to opt out for that or it is on no we have a, DNS. okay no we have route 53 no r53 route 53 on aws which is dns okay. service and okay. here load balancer you have uh, under the ec2 this is network and uh, this is a cloud load balancer let me okay. show you here yeah mm, here this is the load balancer on aws this load balancer will balance the ec2 the one which I was talking about is service is balance the pod, which is inside a cluster. Both need to be in sync for outside people. Okay. Okay. So now guys, I'm going to talk about PV and PVC. I'll simplify this process though. Understanding is very simple, but um, actually there's so much of readings are there for storage. So first thing guys, I'm staying in Bangalore right now. So if I want to add more storage, what I'll do, please hear me out clearly. I will go to SP road. So SP road, we have, I don't know how many of you are from Bangalore. There is a one road where we have a lots of hardware. So you have lots of hardware, lots of storage. Okay. And I'll go to SP road and I will buy claim one storage okay. buy one storage after that i'll come to home and attach to laptop okay this is attached to laptop and then after that what i will do using the disk drive i will mount at e drive this is a manual process for adding storage to my compute which is my laptop are you comfortable Yeah. Are you comfortable? So guys, something similar we do at Kubernetes also. So here in Kubernetes, there is a two things. One is admin work, admin of Kubernetes, and another one is user work. So admin means we'll have a lots of storage added. That process we call PV. Okay. That process, what we call it a PV. PV means persistent volume. PV is equal to like a SP road where we have a vendors which has a lots of storage. So they are making available for us, but I'll have to claim it. I have to buy for it. So what is the buying process? We call it user will do that. So that is called PVC. PVC means persistent volume claim. That means admin have a lots of storage for for in a cluster. 
for example in aws you go and create a volume 10 gb 5 gb you create a 10 gb why because aws management team admin team have made it available for you correct no all of you hello hello yeah yes yes so here you have to someone has to become admin of the cluster they need to create lots of pools of pvs how to create i'll show you that don't worry about that then user will come and they will claim one of the pvs so let's say there's a 10 pvs so 10 pvc can happen okay like a 10 see uh, one shop has a 10 storage i mean 10 hard disk so only 10 people can buy it one people can buy 10 also that's possible okay so that process is called pvc after that what you do pvc attach attach to what as to pod and after that that pod any pvc you attach to the pod all the containers can use it and then you can mount inside a container inside a container so this is the flow for availing the storage are you comfortable all of you the follow process hello uh yeah so rajesh now is there any deplo yeah, deployment needed for these two op uh, opt out for admin, ad that admin okay. will do that deployment yeah so oh, admin okay. can add so many pvs now what are the types of storage in aws can you please tell me Block storage EBS, or something like block storage, yes. Block storage, yeah. network storage, EBS, object EFS. storage. Correct. Yes. Remember that in AWS also, uh, sorry, Kubernetes also, there are different different types of storage which is available. You want to see that? So let me go to ask for Kubernetes. Kubernetes and storage. So many storage type is available. Go to this. Go to this storage classes. Uh, oh no, no just a second hold on not classes storage uh what is this okay some announcement now okay so here so much of things to read but i'm trying to simplify They keep changing the page. That is a problem. Hmm. So this is the. Just now I got it one table. I don't know where it is. I lost it. It should be up. Hmm. I don't have a patient. That's the reason I'm searching for it. So guys, these are the PVs. Admin will add it. So see here, uh, he wants you can EBS block storage, Azure, Azure file. So many of these are deprecated, but it still work. These are the one. Look at this here. These are the one. So Kubernetes slowly, you know, they are getting into the some different mode altogether. So different. Uh, some of these options are block storage. For example, EBS. This one also block storage. Some of the option is network storage like NFS. And different different technologies are there. Object storage, it was there. Git was there. Git LFS, but got replic uh, deleted actually recently. So yeah. So now because we have a clusters which is a limitations with the limitations. So what storage I can go? So I can use this storage host path. What is a host path? Host path is a block storage only. Okay. But the problem with the host path is uh, this storage type, if you use, it will create uh, volumes from the worker itself. Mind it, worker itself. That means whatever the worker storage, they will consume it. This is a easy for the demo, but others also you can use for the demo. So now what I'm going to do, type. I'm going to use host path. For example, if you go to the SP road, you can ask, hey, give me flash drive. 
SSD drive, HDD drive, CDs, pen drive. These are the different types of storage you have for laptop, right? So same way, cluster also have a different types of storage. One of the storage type I'm using host path. This will use the worker storage only. But if you don't want to use the worker storage, then you can use NFS storage. You can also use if you're on AWS, you can use this one. If you're on Azure, you can use this one. If you're on Google Cloud, you can use this one for block storage. Right now, I am having no cloud inter, inter, um, integration. So I'll use the, some of the local one or host path. Okay. So now admin will create a PVs using host path. User will create a PVC and then attach to the pod mount inside the container. So are you understanding the flow, all of you? Hello? Hello? You guys are there? Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. so now the question, yeah, yeah, yeah. the question is, how can we create a PVs and PVCs? So that I'll show you the demo. Very simple, guys. Theoretically, if you understand everything is simple. So now here I have so much, so many tutorials. You can use this. This tutorial is EBS. We cannot use it right now. This tutorial is with the storage class PVC with a host path. I can use it, but this is a dynamic provisioning. I don't need right now. I, I want to manually do that stuff. Automation, I don't want to do that right now. So do you have more? Look at this. This is the PV and PVC with NFS. I don't have NFS server, so I cannot use it. This is the PVC and PVC with the host path. This is something I need it. And that is what I'm going to use it. Okay. So now the question is, first question, how do we create a PVs? So PVs are cluster resources, mind it. So QCTL, get PVs. PVs. Sorry, spelling mistake. Spelling mistake. QCTL get PVs. I have none. Can I create? So I'm have to become. I'm acting like an administrator of right now. Okay. So I have to create a PVs, multiple PVs. So how do you create a PVs? Kind PVs, version, name, and what is a driver? Host path. Where exactly in the worker machine? Here. How much size? One GB. This will create PVs. Let me create a PVs. So here vi pv one dot yaml, and here I created one PVs. Here I'll create one more PVs pv two dot yaml. This is manually I'm doing it, so you'll understand the process when it's automation. I have to change the name of it, and here, and here I'll make it two GB. And I created YAML file. How to deploy? You know that. Apply hyphen PV1 and PV2. So see that I become an administrator and I deploy the two PVs. Availability in the cluster. If you see get PVs, you have two. One is one GV, one is two GV. Available, available. Host path, one host. This is a name and so on understood guys all of you how do you create a admin will create how the manually he'll create a pvs all of you uh, yes, Rajesh, I, I couldn't see this 2gb very chain. can you show me once again the edit one ah, i'll sh share the, this program see here okay yeah. so guys I, I got the two PVs, which was the job of administrator. Okay, not yours. Means not yours, means not users. Now I'll become act like a users who's you consuming the cluster to deploy their own pod. So I need a PVC. First, I'll need a PVC. That means claim. That means you go to the SP road and buy paying by 5,000 rupees. One storage it's like that. So here, what do you want this this act you'll be doing as a user what do you want pvc how much you want 1 gb but here first time i want 3 gb okay 
so here what i'll do look at my screen i'm demanding vi pvc dot yaml file name can be anything like mind it and i'm demanding how much 3 gb do you have a 3 gb guys no no so guys here qctl look at this get pvc see here what happened no i did not apply and here created see pending for example i'll i'll put it in this way you go to the sp road and you say hey bots give me the 5 terabytes of storage now shop will say hey we don't have 5 tv we have 1 tv 2 tv so what do you have to do you have to wait for in front of shop and keep waiting till that shopkeeper will get the 5 tv correct now correct yes, so right is. now so you have to wait for it see here there is an pvc you requested but there is no pv so still these two are available but because you demanded three which is not available so what i will do i will create this time 2 gb or 1 gb and immediately it will be bounded let me show you i am demanding 1 gb and you see here and here you oops, what happened something copy paste mistake i guess <laughs> Hmm. I don't think so. Save it. What is happening? Mm, error is little bit strange. QCTL apply hyphen F. Ah, name, 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 name. So last PVC also the same name. So you have to change this. Name has to be unique within namespace. Here you see QCTL get PVC get pv see here bounded to this one so pvs are like pools created pools of storage created by administrator pvc is like a claiming those storage one to one mapping so this is done and after that what you have to do this pvc which you claimed it with this name which is here in this name okay uh, this was sorry sorry this name uh, here pvc this name you have to do what so logic you have to attach to the pod how let me show you so look at it here this is the pod specifications pod dot spec dot volume and here you are attaching so you have to change this code and here one and here next step mount inside a container so what is the name of the attachment this one and same thing you are mounting inside a container here so you are inside a container now that means whatever the files you stored here inside a container it will be stored at this location are you understanding all of you yeah rajesh so rajesh by mistake let's say if we uh request for uh access storage okay so in that case there won't be any 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 error comes up on the screen so i think we previously did right so pending status ha huh, that will not be for example i'll put it i want you to think in simple way if you okay. have 100 gb and you have consumed 100 gb what will happen you'll not be able to write more files operating system will not allow you for that saving will not happen copying will not happen like that it will fail so now let me do that so guys pod which you, which you know 
pod dot pod one dot yaml and here you have to pvc one and stuff like that done and qctl apply f one f pod one dot yaml enter qctl get pod the pod name is this one and qctl exec ls this pod uh exec ls later ls and then uh this is the path it is empty see nothing is there so you can touch some files inside this if you touch any files inside it and index.html i created one file index.html okay so is there now this file is getting stored at this locations so even though you delete this pod and you create a new pod let me delete that so file file persistence will be there delete pod name of the pod is gone okay but again you create a new pod new pod and that file will be there because you did not delete the volumes see here so even though the pod i mean files content data is there beyond the life cycle of the pod this is called data persistency in the kubernetes pod is gone data is still there because pvs and pvc is still there at the cluster level understood guys all of you if you would have any issues with our channel membership you can drop an email to us at contact@devopschool.com at or you can also unsubscribe from channel membership anytime if you don't want to continue or did not like the video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries we will reply to them at the earliest Thanks for watching.